Hello, uh, in this video I'll be reviewing uh, a program by this guy called, <laughs> his name's a bit tough to pronounce, I hope I don't botch it, uh, Herific Sharma. Herific Sharma, yeah, <laughs> we'll go with that, um, hopefully it's not too botched. Um, so this program is called Workout Split for Muscle Growth, Best Workout Split for Bodybuilding. Um, so, let's have a quick look at it here. What do we have? It's in just in the description of his video. Um, we have four sets, sorry, four, four days, <laughs> lots more than four sets. Um, so let's jump into it. Day one, back and biceps. So we start with deadlift, three sets of 10. Um, I like the exercise selection and I like the amount of sets. I think the reps is probably a little bit high for um, for deadlifts, for conventional deadlifts. It's not horrible though. I've definitely done sets of 10 of deadlift in my life and it's fine, but it is very tough. Um, and it can be tough to recover from. And it can challenge your cardio a little bit as well. Um, and I obviously, and I'll say this, oh, actually there's rep ranges later. So there's no rep range here, um, which is interesting. Um, I would rather see your rep range because then you could um, you can progress up for in reps and also if your reps drop off because um, else you're going to kind of have to go very chill on your first two sets to ensure you get 10 on the last one. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I wish I like the exercise selection. I like starting with a heavy compound, especially on a pull day. Uh, start with your deadlifts. Um, but yeah, maybe just go for like a rep range. I'd make it like five to 10, for example. Then we go to dumbbell rows, um, three sets of 10 to 12. So now we have a rep range. Um, I think this is a good rep range as well. One arm dumbbell row, I think is a fantastic exercise. Good for the health of the shoulder. Good for strength. Um, sorry, good for hypertrophy. Yeah, really, really good. Um, then we go wide grip pull up, all that pull down. I wish he had just made you do pull ups, um, but I understand maybe he's trying to give options for people who don't have like an assisted pull up and aren't strong enough for regular pull ups, or maybe they feel they can't do that rep range of pull ups. Um, three to 10, 12, good rep range. Um, nothing wrong, wrong there, and good sets. Um, and good exercise selection. I really like this. I think it's a great way to structure a pull day. Deadlift or heavy pull from the floor of some sort, then. Um, uh, horizontal work, sorry, then vertical, excuse me, horizontal pulling, vertical pulling. I think that's really good. Um, then we go to barbell bent row. This I'm not liking so much anymore. Um, we've just done our kind of, like, barbell bent row should be, it should start the day, or at the very least be very early in the day, because it's a big, heavy compound, takes a lot of, a lot of commitment, a lot of stability, a lot of strength. Um, and I also don't like that we're barbell bent rowing and deadlifting on the same day. I think a lot of the time when you do that, you can feel your lower back more than your upper back. Um, because what happens is you're tired from a deadlift from keeping yourself, you know, straight and in position. And then you jump into a barbell row and you kind of end up like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's your back. Um, your back starts rounding over. And I think that goes doubly for if you've already done a couple more things here. I don't mind the sets and reps for this exercise, but I really wish if we were going to do it, we would have done it immediately after deadlifting or not at all. Um... Then we go to seated cable row. So now we've, we've now done three horizontal pulls. We've now done nine sets of horizontal pulls plus our deadlifts. Um, and he does say all machine row. I'm assuming that's just depending on what, what you have at your gym. I don't like this so much. I think we've now done too much horizontal pulling. Um, I would like to see this be a vertical pull of some sort. You could include um, like a whichever one you didn't do a lap pull down or a pull up. Or you could include like something like a, like a cross body uh, some, just anything vertical basically um crossbody cable or anything like that because now we've done yet yeah, nine sets of of um of horizontal pulling but only three sets of vertical and i think for bodybuilding honestly vertical pulling might be more important because it really gives you a v taper um so i don't like that and i really don't I, I the more i think about it i really don't like that barbell bent row i just don't think we need it on this day um you could literally this day would be so much better if you just got rid of that barbell bent row and we don't have a problem with like compounds showing up later in the workout and we've now six sets of horizontal pulling, which is, I think, pretty reasonable. Um, but that's, yeah, that's okay. We go into Easy Bar Preacher Curl. Um, fantastic exercise. I really like this. My, my gym doesn't have a preacher station, so it's annoying for me. Um, but yeah, fantastic exercise. I really like the preacher curl. I think it's really good. Um, and I think four sets of 10 to 12 is not bad. Only thing I'm noticing, though, now that I look at it, is we have 12 sets of biceps in a row here, because it's four sets of each of these, which I don't like. Um, okay, but anyway, let's continue. Then we have four sets of concentration curls. Concentration curls, not a bad exercise. Um, 10 to 12 is not a bad rep range, so not the end of the world there. And then we have four sets of seated dumbbell curls. Kind of wish that was an incline curl, um, but that's fine. Um, you're seated. Uh, I guess maybe he's just figuring that your back is probably tired as fuck from uh, your deadlifts and your and your barbell bed rows, so giving you the option to sit down is pretty nice. I think what I would do with this day, I think this is a good day in principle. I think it's just a little bit too much. What I would do is I would get rid of the barbell bent rows and I'd swap them for a vertical pull and I would get rid of the concentration curls. I think easy bar curls and then, oh, you know, with barbell and then going to dumbbells and then finishing that would give you eight sets of biceps, which is plenty. It's all you really need for a single day at least. Um, you wouldn't have to worry about your back being super fried from bent rows because they're gone. 
and it would also bring you back to six sets of each. I think six sets of horizontal, six sets of vertical would be really good. So this day, I think just two small changes. Let's just get rid of two exercises. Get rid of the barbell bent row. Uh, get rid of the um, of the uh, concentration curls and just add in another vertical pull. And I think this would be a great day because that would give you yeah, six sets of basically everything. It would give you, well, give you eight sets of biceps, six sets of horizontal, six sets of vertical and a deadlift. Basically, if you think about how you want to structure a pull day, a deadlift, a decent chunk of sets of horizontal pulling, a decent chunk of sets of vertical pulling, a decent chunk of sets of biceps. That's what you need. And this day has come close to that, but it's just, it's overcooked you on biceps and overcooked you on, on horizontal pulling. So if you just make those three changes, I think this would be a much better day. Uh, okay, let's go to chest and triceps, day two. Bench, three sets of 10 to 12. Um, yeah, first of all, I like exercise selection. It's a really good way to start a day. Um, heavy compound work, awesome, no problem there. Uh, 10 to 12 is probably a little bit higher rep range than I would go. I think if you're starting the day, you may as well do some strength work. You may as well get strong. Um, I would probably make this like 4 to 6 or something, or like 5 to 8, anything in that kind of range. I like how it's included rep ranges, though. I think that's really good. Um, 3 sets is good, nothing wrong there. I just think I'd bring down the rep range a little. Then we're going to incline dumbbell bench. I think this is fantastic. I really think a, a, a great way to structure what your chest work on a day is you go like... You, you've got kind of got four things to think about. You've got barbell versus dumbbell, so that's two. And then you've got incline versus flat. And I think a great way of doing it is just do one of each. So you do a, so in this case, he's got you doing flat barbell, which is great. And then incline dumbbell. So now you've hit all four. Uh, I think that's a great way of structuring a day. You can do it the other way around. You, for example, you could do incline incline barbell and then flat dumbbells. Um, or yeah, whichever way, whichever way around you want to do it. But I think having all four of those, dumbbell, barbell, flat, and incline is fantastic. Um, see, this is the thing. It's 10 to 12, which is a great rep range, but I'm, it's the same rep range as the bench. Wouldn't it be nicer if we had a heavy bench into a slightly lighter dumbbells? I think that would be a good way of doing it. But oh, okay, then we got push-ups, three sets of 15. See, this is a bit interesting. The push-ups, I think, is probably the most important thing to have a rep range on. Because some people, they're going to get to this, especially if you're new to the gym. You've already done bench and incline dumbbells. You're going to get, like, five push-ups, right, if you're new to the gym. Some clients I have can only do five push-ups anyway, right? Imagine you make a bench first, they're going to be cooked. But in other people, especially more experienced people, could well do a set of 25 here. You know what I mean? Um, so I think this would be really where having a rep range could be good. Um, then we go to dumbbell flies. This is a lot of chest work. We've now done, what's this, nine, no, 12 sets of chest. Um, and then we go to pullovers. Uh, by the way, three sets of 10, uh, 12 to 15, I think is a good rep range and good sets on, on flies. But it's too much chest. Then we go to pullovers, which I, I think he's put in here as a chest exercise. Pullovers are a back exercise that, like, the thing, okay, here's what happens with pullovers. You stretch at the lats, right? So the lats are what's actually working, what's actually getting the hypertrophy mostly. But you, the chest contracts, and I think that's why people feel it in their chest. And it's not that it doesn't do anything for your chest, and especially if your chest is this cooked from a million exercises, you probably will feel it. Um, but it's not really a chest exercise. Um, then we go to easy bar skull crushes. Good quality tries to work here, 12 to 13. Very tight rep range, but it's not a bad one. Higher reps um, for skull crushes. Then we go two arm seated dumbbell. What the f? What is that? <laughs> two arm seated dumbbell. Uh, maybe he means like a French press. Two arm seated dumbbell. Um, if that's the case, I'm just going to treat it as a French press. Not a bad choice. Uh, some long head of a tricep work, which is good. And we go cable extension, um, uh, 12 to 13. So that's just some, some extra tricep work. I think this is another day where he's just gone too much. The idea of the day is good. But if I were him, what I would do is I would literally just pull out. I would just get rid of the push-ups and the pullovers. And I'd bring it down to three sets for tricep work. Because if you think about, let's just analyze the day as it looks now. We have 12 sets of chest. And arguably, if, if assuming, maybe you would argue that the pullover is a chest exercise. At that point, we have 15 sets of chest. Your chest is going to fry off the body. You don't need that. And then we also have 12 sets of triceps in a single day. Um, so what I would do, I think is I would just get rid of the push-ups. I don't think you need them here. Push-ups are a good chest exercise, got nothing wrong, nothing against them, but I don't think you need them in this day. So I just get rid of the push-ups, and now we have nine sets of chest, which I think is much better. Um, oh, and I also get rid of the pullovers. <laughs> Sorry, those are gone as well. So we'd have nine sets of chest, uh, and your good quality type of chest training, where we'd have a vertical push, sorry, a, yeah, yeah, a vertical push, a horizontal push, dumbbells and barbell, and a fly. I think that's like, if you think about the ways you want to train the chest, that's basically it. Vertical, horizontal, dumbbell, barbell, and fly. Um, so I think, yeah, just, let's just get rid of the pullovers, get rid of the push-ups. And then you've noticed he's given us four sets of each of a tricep movement, which is 12 sets. I would just bring it down to three of each, and that would be nine sets. I think that's much more calm. So you'd walk away with my change version of a day. You'd walk away with nine sets of chest, nine sets of triceps. I think that's fantastic. 
Um, especially considering that, remember, most of those chess movements are recruiting your triceps as well. But then you can say this day, well, we've got some space on this day, so what should we put? And that's where I would put some forearms, some abs, some traps, um, whatever you want. Uh, maybe you could do like a little giant set at the end of the day. You've got some extra time because I've got rid of that stuff for you. So you could do like a giant set of like shrugs to um, like reverse curls to cannibal crunches or something. That's just an example. Um, so it's like rather than fucking annihilating your chest into the ground, just give your chest what it needs and then spend the extra time focusing on some other muscles. Um, okay, then we have quads, hamstrings, and calves. So basically just legs. <laughs> Start with squat, three sets of 15. So once again, I like the exercise selection and I like the amount of sets. I think starting a freaking hair is going, getting in my like face. Um, but yeah, I like the exercise selection. I like the rep. So no, I don't like the reps. I like the sets. 15 is too many for a squat, man. Especially, you're going to like, here's the thing. If it was the top of a rep range, like 10 to 15, maybe you've progressed to it over time. But if you're just starting with sets of 15 on a squat, you're not going to be limited by your quads. You're going to be limited by your cardio or your will to live. Especially because it's three sets uh, and there's no rep range here. So you're going to have to go so chill on your first two to make sure you can do 15 on the last one. Because 15 on the last one's going to be fucking hard. So you're going to have to select such a sandbag weight in order to make sure you get 15. So I really don't like this. I really wish he'd brought down this, the, the reps to like, to anything really. 4 to 6, 8 to 12, whatever you want. But just not 15. That's crazy high. Then we go to leg press. Three sets of 15 to 20. So once again, this is very, very high reps. I think you're probably going to... I have done high rep leg press in the past, but I'm more and more convinced that I just was limited by like just crazy, crazy burn, like, like pain tolerance more than actually like muscular, muscular failure. And I think you'll find that here, especially because you've done three sets of 15 on the squat before. And also the other thing is if say you are the sort of person who thinks that high reps is good, surely what it would be better is to do some heavy work and then go to high reps because now we've just got high reps straight into high reps. Then we go to dumbbell lunges. I kind of like that this is a little bit later on because you're going to be so pre-fatigued that like you won't have to hold that heavy of a weight for your dumbbell lunges because you'd be kind of cooked. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to do dumbbell lunges, why not put them there? 8 to 12, I think, is a good rep range. Then we go leg extensions, three sets of uh, 15 to 20. I think that's a good rep range for leg extensions. I think leg extensions feel a bit nicer in high reps and a little bit less on the heavy on the knee. Um, so that's fine. The only thing I'd say, once again, we've kind of overdone it a little bit here in the sense that we, we've done too many sets, I think. Because if, if we add this all up here, we've now done 12 sets of quads, which I think is probably too much. So probably what I would do if this was me is I would just get rid of one of these exercises. <laughs> I would probably just get rid of like the, the lunch maybe and just keep the, keep the other three. Then we've got a stiff leg deadlift. And this, I think this is just in the wrong place. I love the idea of squatting and stiff leg deadlifting on the same day. I think it's a great way of programming a leg day. I just think we've done this in the wrong order. Because now with, here's the thing, bro. If I were to get you to do this workout, um, by the time you got to a stiff leg deadlift, you are so cooked. You're like crying for your mum after 12 sets of squats. And then I'm like, oh, okay, now do a highly technical, difficult exercise of a stiff leg deadlift. I just think there's not, I think if you wanted to reorder this day, say get rid of your dumbbell lunges and bring your stiff leg deadlifts up to right after squats. So the order would be squats, stiff leg deadlift, and then into your isolation work. Um, then we got leg curl, 12, 3 sets, 12, 15. I don't hate it, but I also feel like, honestly, especially for me, my hamstrings are so cooked after stiff leg deadlifts, I don't need a leg curl. Um, so what I would probably do, I don't hate leg curls in general, I think they're fantastic. I'd probably put them on another day, um, that way you're training hamstrings twice a week. Because leg curls are a very cheap exercise, not going to fatigue any other part of you or anything like that. So I would just put them on another day, um, and in that way your, your hamstrings, are, instead of destroying them off the bone in one day, they get kind of decently hit over two days. Um, then we've got standard calf raise to assist to failure, seated calf raise to assist to failure. Yeah, not a problem with that. Once again though, I would maybe just move one of those to another day. And that's something we'll talk about at the end of this little video is basically the flaw with this workout sort of program, this kind of body part split, is you get that sort of vibe where you absolutely fry yourself off the bone on one day and then you don't hit that muscle again for a whole nother week, um, which is not the way you make gains. The way we, you make gains, both scientifically and anecdotally, so the science says this is true and then literally anecdote says this is true, is you can train the muscle two or three times a week. But two is fine, three may be better depending on the muscle um, and hit it just enough that it needs to recover, but not so much it's destroyed. That's the best way to grow muscle. And that's why these sort of body part splits um, sort of fall down. Because you're coming into a gym only to train one muscle. You kind of destroy it, right? Um, which is not necessary. Um, so, yeah. But, once again, not a bad leg day. It just needs some, some tweaking. So, if we just quickly talk through tweaks, we'd bring the uh, stiff leg deadlifts to the top just after squats. We'd maybe get rid of dumbbell lunges and maybe move leg curls and calves to another day. But, once again, it's a skeleton of a good program. This guy, you can kind of tell he he vaguely knows what he's doing. He's always got his compound first. Compounds first, at least. He's, he's kind of using rep ranges a little bit, but you can tell he's still a little immature in his programming. Um, but not horrible, just, just a little off. And then we go last day. Day four, shoulders, abs, forearms. 
not a bad combination of a day, kind of three muscles that you can kind of, uh, you don't need tons for, or three muscles that are kind of easy to train, so you can kind of run for them all in one day. This sort of day, I'm, I'm just looking at it here, I see it's long, it's probably the day you'd superset a bunch of stuff. Um, seated barbell press, three sets of eight to 12, 10 to 12, sorry. I don't like a seated barbell press, it takes a lot of setup, and it's like, why not just do it standing, why not get the benefits of, of like the, of, of a standing barbell press, you know, train your stability, train your axial strength, all that sort of stuff. And I don't think it's an exercise where you get a lot more by doing it seated. So I would just switch out to standing. Then we go seated Arnold press. I think the Arnold press is is not good. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's not terrible. I don't think you should be arrested for no Arnold press, but it's not as good, I think, as just a straight dumbbell press. Um, so I would just switch out to a straight dumbbell press. Then we have dumbbell lateral raises, three sets of... I should mention those first two are three sets of 10 to 12, which I think is a fine rep range, nothing wrong with that. Then we go dumbbell lateral raise, 12 to 15, uh, three sets. I think that's great as well. Uh, this is basically all you need for shoulders. Um, uh, three, you know, uh, that's six sets of heavy vertical pressing and then some side raises. Fantastic. You could probably add some rear delts, maybe some face pulls, but I would stop there. But he's not. He's not stopping there, not by any means, because now we've got Smith Machine Press. I'm assuming this is vertical, 10 to 12. You don't need this. You've already done six sets of heavy vertical pressing. You don't need more. Um, and then he's got you doing upright rows, three sets of 10 to 12. Uh, for side delts, um, obviously, but like, why? You don't need it. Why not just do an extra set of your lateral raises? You don't need this many set. Uh, you know, for, for side delts, you could survive that. You could survive six sets of side delts. That's not a problem. But I just would get rid of the Smith Machine press, bro. Like, you've, you do not need nine sets of heavy vertical pressing in the same day. You don't need it. It's too much. Uh, your shoulders aren't going to thank you. Like, the structure of the shoulders is not going to thank you. And also, the muscles aren't going to thank you because you've done too much. Um, then we go to dumbbell shrug. Yeah, totally fine with that. Um, I think one thing to notice about dumbbell shrugs is you'll quite possibly quite quickly get stronger than the dumbbells at your gym. But if you're not, um, then not a problem at all. Dumbbell shrugs are good. 3 to 10 to 12, I think it's a fine rep range. Then barbell wrist curls. Um, yeah, not a problem with that. I would maybe prefer that to be a finger curl than a wrist curl, but it's not terrible. And then barbell static hold. So this is interesting. It's not, this is not really a forearm exercise. It's like grip exercise. I'll probably make a video talking about the difference. Um, but it's not bad to build your grip. And, and to be fair, because you've done the wrist curls, your forearms are going to like fry quickly. So I don't hate it. And then we got ab crunches, leg raises, side raises. What is a side raise for abs? Does he mean like, like in a side plank position and raising up the side? Because that's a glute exercise. I don't know what that is. That, that last one, side raise for abs. I uh, could give it a quick Google. Please bear with me. Side raise abs so let's just see what comes up mm. oh does he mean the exercise where you stand uh, up and have a dumbbell on either side or on one side that's an okay exercise i, I prefer to see like a russian twist or something like that uh, for for obliques uh, or like a windscreen wiper or something um ab crunches once again i'm not a huge fan of those it's such a small range of motion i prefer to see something like cannibal crunch or a, like a setup or even better a decline setup uh, leg raises are good. He doesn't mention whether they're hanging or lying or anything like that. I'm assuming... Well, both are good, to be fair. Lying leg raises and hanging leg raises are good. So, I would just say, I'd change up the exercise selection here a little bit. Um, I would just take... Um, I would take uh, ab crunches, turn them into a decline setup. I would take the leg raises, make, just make sure they're hanging. Um, and if you can't do hang leg raises, no problem, just do hang knee raises. They might even be better. And then I take those side raises and switch them to something like a Russian twist or a windscreen riper or like a, a side knee raise. Just anything better for your obliques. Um, so we have a look at this day. This is another day where we've just done a little too much. Most, not horribly so, but this is actually not a bad day. But only thing I would do is I would just get rid of a Smith machine press. That way, that would take you from nine sets of heavy pressing to six, which I think is much better. Um, yeah, I mean, I just change up the exercise selection at the end with the abs. So if we look at this program overall, this is not a bad program as such. Or I should say it's not a terrible program. It's just suffering from a little bit too much. I've talked you through what I think about each of those days. Um, like a little bit too much on each day for one muscle, which I think is, like I say, a consequence of a sort of kind of body part split. Um, so this might be a good example to you of why a like a push-pull legs or a, um, or a full body or an upper lower or something is a better way of programming than body part splits. Um, but with that said, I think it's still a workable program, especially if you just move some things around. And this could be something that, like, if you wanted to, you could copy this into a Google Sheet spreadsheet and play with it. Um, and just move some stuff around. For example, uh, you could move, like, those leg curls to, um, to day two, because we, pull, we pulled out the push-ups. So while you were going to do push-ups, you could do your leg curls. And you could move those calf raises from day three to day four, because we pulled out the Smith Machine Press. And you could pop in the push-ups from day two into, um, into day one, because we got rid of a barbell row. So... 
what I'm saying is that we got rid of some stuff, but instead of just getting rid of it, if you wanted to, you could move it around and just make it that you're training more muscles more often. Um, and then, of course, like with everything, there's some super... We're kind of missing out on some supersets here. Uh, as an example, we could be supersetting our, um, like, like abs in between things, forearms in between things, traps in between things, especially uh, the things that aren't compounds, like later on. Like, say, take for example, our cable tricep extensions. You can be supersetting forearms of that, not a problem, or abs. Um, so once again, I would say this is not a terrible program, and you can see that his choice of exercise selection is pretty good. Um, and the use of rep ranges is good. I'd like to use the rep ranges. Um, there's just some some sort of more basic mistakes, like too high reps on a squat, too much on, on single days, and then no, no supersets. But yeah, not terrible. And like I said, you can see this guy is like close <laughs> to to being a like good programmer, but he's just sort of fallen down towards the end. And I think this is the classic mistake of a lot of... Um, What's the word? A lot of people, and myself included sometimes, that you want to do more, so you, you add more. You're like, oh, and then I'll do some machine press afterwards. It's like, but you don't need to. You've already done, you've already done, uh, you know, six sets of heavy pressing. Why put in this machine press? And I understand why, because you want to. You want to do more. You want to be better. Um, but, yeah, maybe just be, be a bit more chill. Or if you don't want to be more chill, just be a bit more smart about your structure and move things around so you can train more muscles in the same day. Um, but, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll um, hopefully see you on the next one. Cheers.